统领庞大的时尚帝国，如何避免错误决策？ I haven't avoided, I live with it. 功成名就之时，他遇到了怎样的挫折？ I also had a brain tumor during the fashion show. That was a huge shock. 对于迅速崛起的中国市场，他又有何期许？ Such emerging market like China, which is changing and growing very fast. The American dream is not the American dreams. 杨澜专访美国著名时装设计师拉尔夫·劳伦。畅聊他打造上百亿美元时尚帝国背后的故事，敬请收看。大家好，欢迎收看《杨澜访谈录》。美国时尚设计师 Ralph Lauren 先生的一生呢，充满了传奇。五万美金起家，如今呢，已经打造了一个年销售额超过一百亿美金的品牌帝国。他的设计不仅仅局限在时装领域，而已经进入到。家居用品、旅行等各个方面，可以说他不仅设计服装，也在全方位的打造生活方式，打造人们的梦想。已经七十五岁的他，依然活跃在时尚设计的最前沿，即使是脑肿瘤，也没有能够让他停下脚步。他充满各种色彩的一生当中，有哪些刻骨铭心的记忆，在他的事业中不断给他带来灵感的缪斯，究竟又是哪一位女性呢？我们在美国采访了他。时尚大鳄拉尔夫·劳伦的人生经历并非一帆风顺，他把五万美元贷款的领带生意变成一个上百亿美元的时装帝国，但这个帝国已曾有一次次濒临危机，其不仅十年后，拉尔夫·劳伦的公司就因财务危机差点走到破产边缘，新财务主管的到来和新的运营理念才逐渐使原有的混乱局面一步步转入正轨，而意外的打击很快又不期而至。一九八七年初。拉尔夫·劳伦被诊断出患有良性脑瘤。同年四月，他接受了手术，切除肿瘤，并完全康复。Any unexpected success or failure in your designing career? Because in retrospect, we would see that's a huge success. Everything, you know, just happened. But、uh, nothing just happened. Just no, nothing just happened. Nothing so tell us happens. the stories. When people write storybooks, they write storybooks. But I lived the life,、mm. and.、Um, What were some of the most challenging moments in your career? Well, I had、uh, when I started out and made the ties and shirts. I started to become successful. It was about after about ten years. I hired.、Uh, I had started my company by borrowing fifty thousand dollars from another person in the industry. He lent me the fifty thousand. He became my partner, and so all of a sudden we were growing and. And all of a sudden, I got a phone call from the banker and said, "Mr. Lauren, your, your bills are not being paid on time."、Mm. And、um, I had a team, thinking they were doing all the right things. And all of a sudden, I found that I was in trouble financially because I was taking on too many things, and no one told me to stop.、Mm -hmm. And I was being applauded for many ways, but on, lot, on some levels, on the financial level. I was not being applauded, and、um, one of the bankers came to me and said, "Ralph, you're almost out of business.、Mm. What are you going to do?" That was ten、uh, years after you started. That was about ten years after、wow. I started. But I remember the pain, and、um, and I took everything I had saved, which was a hundred thousand dollars, and I put it back in the company. A hundred thousand dollars was all I had left,、mm. and. And some, and I decided to license some of the brands and have some money coming in, and so it gave me a shot to to go out and hire better people, and and so that was a very important moment of seeing success in terms of artistic success, but failure in terms of of a company that could go wrong in its in its finances,、mm. and that was a very important time, and. So that was a very major moment in my life. I've had those every five years. I've, <laughs> I had a show where I remember doing a fashion show, and the clothes weren't ready, and the tailors were ironing or sewing the clothes as the girl is about to walk out the runway. Well, what did you figure out? What happened to to make it so late? Too、a、many things at hand. Of, of not getting the right professionals, not not planning well, not. Thinking you got it going, and all of a sudden, and I said to myself, as I was walking on on Broadway, not knowing where I was going, I said, "This is never going to happen again."、Yeah. And so that was that was that.、Um, I also had a brain tumor 
mm. during the fashion oh. show. That was a so, huge shock to so you. So that was a, yeah. you know, here is success and, and life looked really rosy and all of a sudden someone tells you the worst thing you can hear. Mm. And you go through it. What was your response to that? Did you talk with your family about this? Or did you I handle it I, in... I didn't tell my children. No. Uh, I told my wife mm -hmm. and my head of my company, the president of my company. Uh, what kind of new perspective did that incident give you to look at, to look at your life, I, career? I, I looked at my life and said, um, I'm going to make it through this. On, on some levels, I, I, um, it was an un, such an unreal situation mm. that you living, not a movie, you're the one living. I remember I was going to the hospital in a cab and the, I think to myself, I'm going to see the doctor now, he's going to tell me, Ralph, you're going to have an operation or you're home free. I'm going to feel one way when I come back, I'm going to, one of those things are going to happen. Well, he told me I needed an operation. Mm. So, um, and I got through it. Mm. I got a good doctor. It was, I was lucky. Nair Fu Lao Lun 曾毫不掩饰地表达对中国风的热爱。然而，他的产品初次进入中国却并不顺利。经销商将低端产品线作为进驻中国市场的重点，其运营体系混乱，导致仿货层出不穷，严重影响其在中国的品牌形象。从二零一零年开始，集团大量关闭在中国市场的店铺。面对当下欧美市场的普遍疲软，调整经营策略，重返中国市场，无疑是拉尔夫劳伦下一步的重要战略。But once you have built up an empire, you have more than thirty thousand employees worldwide, and you have layers of layers of management who are taking their responsibility. You have a beautiful house in the suburb, where the telephone signal is not so good. So there, there is a risk of being kept away from the reality, from touching the reality every day. And how would you, how, what have you done to avoid that mistake? I haven't avoided it. I live with it. I, I, in any company, in any life, you know, there, there are things that go wrong. And, and even in, as a great company that we are today, it has its pressures and it has its it's a public company and how do you how do you maintain your sales how do you increase your sales how do you project for the next few years you now have stockholders and shareholders mm -hmm. I do my best I I fight I have brought the company forward for 47 years mm -hmm. it is not a company that is is going backwards it's a company that's leading mm -hmm. and I'm very tuned in to who we can find that would be the next the next Ralph Lauren, the next good people as the company goes forward. And how would you adapt to the different cultures in the world? For example, when you bring your brands, your lifestyle, your philosophy to China, you can't tell a Chinese consumer by saying, you should buy my stuff because I represent America. People in China, people in Russia, uh, are all fashion shopping consumers. People all over the world today are being. Over. It's not America only. Mm -hmm. It's it's the world. It's Brazil. It's we're, it's an international world of people that aspire to become important. People that aspire to build companies and to keep those companies mm -hmm. and to make them stronger and better. I think what I offer is a sense of my own individuality. Mm -hmm. What can I do that I haven't done? You know, in terms of taste, talents excitement, fighting to build newness, rejuvenating polo, keeping the new brands ahead, keeping a new, a new purple label luxury company. Doing all these things is what excites me. Mm -hmm. And the ability to do that is exciting. According to your understanding on, and observation about such emerging market like China, which is changing and growing very fast, why do you think your philosophy and your lifestyle will make their life happier and easier. When people say the American dream, the American dream is not the American dream, it's, it's the Russian dream, it's the China dream, it's aspiration to, to taste life, the aspiration to go to a restaurant that's wonderful, enjoy it, go to a theater, enjoy the theater, go home and have a nice home with beautiful furniture that they know they've earned or they work for. 
know that they're dealing with the best taste in the world, feeling, feeling happy about accomplishment. Mm -hmm. I think that's very, very important. So I have all those feelings. Why am I going to China? It's a new world for me, and it's a new world for the Chinese. 位于纽约麦迪逊大街的莱茵兰德大厦是目前曼哈顿少数几个保存完好的建于19世纪与20世纪交替时期的豪宅之一。1983年，正在为自己的纽约旗舰店物色店址的拉尔夫·劳伦看中了这座豪宅，开始全面整修并重新设计莱茵兰德大厦。历时三年，拉尔夫·劳伦旗舰店终于在1986年4月开门迎客。整个店铺折射着拉尔夫·劳伦对于上世纪初英美上层生活方式的热爱与推崇，营造出一种旧世界乡村俱乐部的氛围。同时，店内所有产品均对消费者开放，不仅仅是服装和配饰，连墙纸、唱片和灯具都不吝出手。有人说，这个店面推出后，拉尔夫·劳伦无异于掀起一场对于市场销售在观念上的革命。You have done um, a lot uh, to restore uh, the history, uh, and, and actually, when you uh, first transformed the uh, the Rhinelander Mansion into a flagship store, everybody thought you were crazy. But you have um, uh, started similar projects in Paris and, and elsewhere in the world. So the preservation and the restoration of history and heritage means something to you, right? Those are the things that we love. That we say, look at that, we, and we don't want to see him go. The Rhinelander Mansion before I got there was was running down. It was it was a, a food store, and it was. I came in there, and I I live in that area. I pass that street so many times. I'm saying, what is that mansion? That that look how great that could be. The combination of architecture and fashion. And ideas and food—they all work together. Mm. I, I built a restaurant in Paris. Mm -hmm. Now, having a restaurant in Paris, mm. you know, is a very challenging thing to do. Parisians are known for their food and, and restaurants and all that. Mm. But I had a sense of what we could do that was exciting. Mm. You know, what one night I wanted a hamburger. I said, "Where can I get an American hamburger?" <laughs> I couldn't find it. Mm. And when I started to build my new store, I said, "I want to have a restaurant. I want to say something with my restaurant. I'm not a chef, but I have the good chefs, and I have the eye and the taste to say I'm going to believe in quality. If it's organic, I'm going to fight harder for the things that are healthy. I believe we want good things. We want good food. We want we want healthy things. We're very conscious of living. Living is about health. Working out. People's." Concerned about their body, not only for how it looks, but that's what's going to help you live longer and have a better life. 二零零八年北京奥运会上，拉尔夫·劳伦首次成为美国代表团奥运会服装设计和制造商，为代表团的一千五百名运动员提供开幕式、闭幕式和期间日常穿着的服装。美国代表团身着清一色的海军蓝制服和白色贝雷帽出场。经典高雅的设计彰显出复古的时尚气息，吸引了无数人的目光。二零一零年的温哥华冬奥会与二零一二年的伦敦奥运会，美国国家队仍然延续了和拉尔夫·劳伦的合作。You designed for the uh, U.S. Olympic team yes. for 2008 and other Olympic games too, yes. right? Yes. How did you uh, take that job? Uh, what kind of special joy or fun did that give you? Amazing, because I was representing America. Could you imagine going to China or wherever the Olympics were and saying, "This is the American team, and everyone is wearing my clothes that I designed for them." Mm -hmm. And um, whether it's the Olympic, it's or, or tennis, or uh, all, I, I've loved sports all my life, so I had an opportunity to. To get involved with sports in another way, and it's a national, international world today. Mm. So, if someone makes a movie about your career and, and, and life, and if you want to give one sentence as what kind of story that should be, what would you say? Well, it's a happy story mm -hmm. and a real story, and and it was um, not over. Uh, it's a, it's a story that. Was unique in that it was all natural. If I had to explain it as I am explaining it now,、mm. everything I did was I loved what I was doing.、Mm. 
I had no money and I had, I had no worry. I, I had nothing to lose. I just went and did what I believed in and I stayed with it. And so, and, and my instincts, just as I said, I'm not going to change the tie, was the same way about the clothes. Mm -hmm. I, it, it was not about fashion, it was about how I would like to live my life. 作为时尚大鳄，拉尔夫·劳伦最享受的时光是和妻子丽奇、儿子安德鲁和大卫以及女儿迪兰共同分享生活。妻子既是他的灵感来源，也是生活管家。在劳伦的办公室里，摆满了家人们在蒙托克沙滩上和科罗拉多农场里的各种照片。如今，儿子安德鲁成为了电影制片人，女儿迪兰经营着著名的连锁糖果店，而儿子大卫则参与到父亲创立的事业中。掌管全球的市场推广业务。You are going to celebrate the 50th anniversary of your marriage.、Uh, describe to us、uh, what kind of woman your wife Ricky is, and how has she been an inspiration throughout your life? I think she's everything I've ever liked about women,、uh, meaning and more in that you know, as a young man, you know, she's beautiful and and and. Um, sweet and delicate, all the things that I value.、Um, and、uh, over the years, she's been a loyal wife.、Uh, we've had wonderful children.、Um, we're fam a close family. She's never demanded anything. Never said, "I got to have that thing. I want that house."、Mm -hmm. Never ever said that.、Um, but enjoys it with me. I think she's a pretty, pretty wonderful, and I think,、um, I think, you don't last 47 years in marriage without substance and without an understanding and without hard times and good times.、Mm. I think she's、uh, solid, bright, stay, stay true to herself.、Um, she's a, a writer. She's a, so she's done things, not just sat back and said, "I'm Ralph's wife." Not. Not just、uh, she's done things on her own. She's her own woman.、Mm. I've learned a lot about women from living with my wife.、Mm -hmm. Tell us about the most memorable trip that you took your family to. I, I couldn't. Rem I, we've had, we've had many, many trips、yeah. together, but、uh, I, I could tell you about Africa. But that's not what it's about.、Mm. It's about did we have a good time together?、Mm. It's not about. Did we fly helicopters or did we hang out the window of that、yeah. place or that? It was having my children together and my family together was great.、Mm -hmm. Feeling like I brought them somewhere that they haven't seen before was great too.、Um, I don't live on trips. You know, I don't live on 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 seeing how flashy my life could be or what I haven't done.、Mm -hmm. I, I like my life day to day.、Mm -hmm. I like today. It's beautiful here. The sun is out. I feel great. I have obligations. I'm opening a new store Monday. I'm opening a restaurant next day. I love that too. I love the energy and the fact that I can do many things. And I've challenged myself to not sit still. And I'm tuned in to that. And and I love the fact that I have a family that I can turn to and and have them be there. And I hope that they're happy. What has、uh, helped you down to earth after all the success and the glamour the world may surround you with? I think my wife has, has kept me down to earth a little bit. I, I think that it's in me. It's my background. It's my history. My family.、Uh, I value life. I value people. I want to do the right thing in the world, and hope that I've made a contribution. 既是设计师，也是收藏家。时尚与复古怎样融会贯通 ？But what's the connection between cars and clothes and fashion? I think they're inspirational. 竞争愈加激烈，他选择华丽退场还是勇往直前 ？You know, I could be out. You know, no new ideas coming to me anymore. Were there those moments? No, I love competition and I love what I'm doing. 请继续收看，杨澜专访美国著名时装设计师拉尔夫·劳伦，敬请关注。这里记录的是一个人和他的时代。一九四六年，中国第一位原子物理女硕士王光美，放弃去美国读博士的机会，离开北平，奔赴延安
第一次见到了刘少奇。此时，季羡林刚刚从德国回到北平，成为北京大学教授，继续潜心研究梵文和吐火罗文。一九八二年，季羡林回到母校济南一中参加校友聚会。不远处的济南二中，十七岁的巩俐最大的心愿是能考上一所师范学校。二零零六年，巩俐来到英国参加电影《迈阿密风云》的首映。不远处的克劳伦斯宫里，五十八岁的查尔斯正和卡米拉庆祝他们结婚一周年。此时，泳池里的菲尔普斯正备战北京奥运，在水立方，他一人夺得八枚金牌的传奇将令世界为之惊叹。二十一世纪的第一个十年，《杨澜访谈录》走进这些历史风云人物，以独特视角为您讲述一个人和他的时代。这位掌控时尚帝国的设计师，也是著名的经典汽车收藏家。他的汽车收藏以罕见、美感和功能著称。他拥有超过六十辆极品汽车，几乎包括所有高级跑车品牌：奔驰、布加迪、阿尔法罗密欧、宾利、捷豹、保时捷和法拉利。年份由上世纪三十年代至今，车款更是具有代表性，每一辆都是传奇。他收藏的汽车曾在波士顿美术馆和法国巴黎卢浮宫旗下的装置艺术博物馆进行过展览。So, Mr. Lauren, when did you start to collect cars? What did they talk to you? I, I think cars were excitement. I needed to change. I needed something in my life that was more fun. I ride horses. I play ball, but. Cars, you know, when I was young, I always all young kids, young boys especially, think love cars um, at all ages because of the speed. And I like the speed, and I like the power of the drive. And mm. but it was an escape; it was a sport. And so I went to racing school.、Uh, I went to motorcycle racing school. I went to car racing school at different times in my life.、Mm. And、um, I found it to be something that was、um, an escape. At the same time, the excitement of finding cars as a collector, where I never was a collector, I was a driver and loved the cars. I couldn't afford the cars, but starting to get into the car world, understanding cars, talking to people around the world, and finding that there are other people that love cars too. So it's it's a distraction for me and a hobby that was very very exciting. I'd go to sleep thinking. I gotta get that car. Where, <laughs> how am I gonna find that car? But what's、and、the connection between cars and clothes and fashion? I think they're inspirational. I, I've I've designed watches that were inspired by cars.、Mm -hmm. uh, the dashboard of a Jaguar with a wooden dashboard I made it into a watch.、Mm -hmm. uh, I've made chairs, carbon fiber, which is the new. Racing fab,、uh, materials that are used in cars—they are much lighter than steel, and 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 so I've made carbon fiber chairs,、mm -hmm. and they are, you know, inspirations that were about modernness. Also, cars are a combination of vintage,、mm -hmm. beauty, and modern technology, and modern design. Stimulating to me,、mm -hmm. stimulating to me because it's another world, it's another shape, it's another material. And as I bought them and started to enjoy each of the cars, you know, it it brought me deeper and deeper into it.、Mm -hmm. And now, as you know, they are considered art today, and and I help bring it to that point.、Mm -hmm. And、um, so it's been very fascinating. Also, financially, it's been an interesting, <laughs> been an interesting thing to have a hobby、mm -hmm. that that turned out to be good. They、risk. have been displayed in a quite number of museums yes, already, right? Yes. 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 拉尔夫·劳伦不忘积极回馈社会，在许多慈善活动和社会公益活动中都扮演着重要的角色。他曾以募捐基金的方式赞助乳癌研究机构，参与贫困儿童的慈善捐款，并出资修葺世界各地的古典建筑。二零一零年十月，拉尔夫·劳伦获得荣誉崇高的纽约市之石，以表扬他的杰出社会贡献。
。在他的时尚帝国里，拉尔夫·劳伦也将继续担任集团董事长兼首席执行官。正如他自己所言，一切都还只是开始，未来仍充满无限可能。And later on, you made, um, you know, a, a fair amount of donations and and time yes. to, uh, well, you know, realized, cancer research yes. and caring for other people. Yes. Yeah, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing you have done. But then, fashion is changing so fast, and and a competition is coming up every day with all these young designers. What has kept you going forward like this? You just. Somehow, you know, I've always admired longevity. Mm. I've admired people that uh, were not of the only moment. People that can cap can carry it on. There, there are actors. There are musicians. Mm. There are people that came up in 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 rock and roll, and the great ones stayed. Frank mm. Sinatra lasted, you know. The whole pile of names that you know, M Paul McCartney and the Beatles, they didn't last for five years or ten years. They lasted for forty years. I admired longevity, and I admired consistency, and I admired the individuality of holding your own, and standing, and fighting for what you believe in.、Mm -hmm. And I think if there's anything that I really believe in, is that. And what made me keep keep going? I didn't get great reviews every year.、Mm -hmm. I didn't. People didn't just say you're wonderful. In fact. They couldn't care less, Ralph Lauren, but the consumer loved Ralph Lauren.、Mm. It's not the fashion editor. But were there moments that you felt really, you know, exhausted, tired of everything, with this tedious, all the details coming up to you,、uh, yes. or a moment when you thought, you know, I could be out, you know, no new ideas coming to me anymore? Were there those moments? No. Never. No. There are moments when I. I always thought what I was doing was what I loved.、Mm. I, tr I tried to do what I loved. So basically, you're saying you have never been tired of this. Sure,、uh, you know.、Um, But the capability to adapt to the changes of people's taste, desire, lifestyle. You know, I'm I'm competitive. Uh huh. I love I love I love competition, and I love what I'm doing.、Mm. And I love the fact that I'm not following.、Mm. If I started to follow, then I would quit.、Mm. So what's motivated me is newness, is energy to change, the awareness that things move on. Maybe because I have a family and young people always,、um, and and in my company, I listen to people just、uh, just like the man that didn't listen to me when I wanted to get another job、mm -hmm. in the tie business. You know, I don't want to make that mistake,、mm. and so I, I'm inspired by young people. I'm inspired by newness. I'm inspired by the challenge of building a business that no one ever built before.、Mm. It's not only the artistic part of it; it's the excitement of what can I do that I haven't done before.、Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ralph Lauren 一再强调，他不是设计服装的，而是在设计梦想，而他的下一个梦想永远在路上。他的两道爱好——时尚和跑车，呃，互为灵感。有的时候，他从跑车上看到时尚的优雅；有的时候，又让时尚具有跑车的速度。但是，无论如何，在他的身上，你永远都能找到美国牛仔的镜头。好，感谢你收看本期的《亚兰访谈录》，我们下周见。So I'm just curious about, you know. You're, you are working in a fast-moving business, but while at the same time it seems that you stress something stays longer, it gets better over time. First, you look at a car. Wow, that's, look at that car. Where was that from? I remember being in London and walking out in the store, and there was a, a Ferrari. It was so unique, very handsome, not wild, not a red fire engine, but a black convertible. And so I went into. Another store and found out where where you get these Ferraris, and they found out they were very rare and hard to find, and and they were beautiful. And so the specialness, and the rarity, and the speed, and and what it stood for, and how it was made in limited editions, were appealing to me.